Hello there ladies and gentlemen, hello hello and welcome back to yet another video. Uh, many of you asked me what are my, my thoughts about the new changes and whatnot. I haven't been available to make a builds video because I was quite busy, you know, hol holiday season and whatnot and also my real life job and etc etc. But there we go. I'm gonna update you on the Mitty Syndrome build and the Poisoner build. Now many people asked me about specific traits, like for example, the, where was it, not the treat, uh, no, sorry, uh, this one for example, Assassin's Reward, that been a little bit buffed and moved to the third tier in acrobatics, it used to be at the second tier, a little bit less, and people been asking me, have I changed anything in the build, what, what am I doing right now, and etc, etc. Uh, I'm gonna explain my builds in uh, in all the aspects. Basically, if it's PvE, World We World, or PvP, I am in World We World right now just for the latency, you know, issues because I don't want to have a uh, high uh, FPS. Well, not latency. Basically, FPS drops and whatnot from my recording. I want my recording to be smooth, you know. And I'm next to the trainer, so I'm just gonna reset my traits a little bit here and there. Uh, right, so we're gonna start with the Mitty build. The, this is the build that I usually use in PvE. I use this build also in World by World, although I do use the Poisoner build as well in World by World. I am, as you already know, I just love condition builds uh, with my Thief. I just, you know, it, it has a different play style to it. That's the way I enjoy to play it and, you know, this is my opinion of, of the thief because I just enjoy it much much more so obviously we're going for uh, 30 points in shadow arts uh, 20 points in acrobatics and 20 points in uh, trickery again this is the midi build you can use this build either in worldly world or uh, PVE like dungeons like soloing champions uh, you already know I have about 50 champion names on my on on my belt so to speak uh, not to show off or something I'm just saying that this build works more than any other build for thief that I've te personally tested so what are we actually going for in shadow arts we're going for shadow protector okay because this combined with shadow rejuvenation it's a freaking amazing heal that you can use on yourself Obviously, we're going for Shadow's Embrace as well, because we do need to remove conditions. We will use Stealth a lot with this build, especially when we uh, solo champions. If we need to use Cloak and Dagger and instantly sneak attack to apply 5 bleeds. Or if we're going uh, Pistol Dagger, Pistol Dagger, uh, we're definitely going for Cloak and Dagger and uh, sneak attacks. So this one is really, really good in PvE and World of World. Uh, I would suggest if you don't want to go for that one, you could go for Cloak in Shadows. That means when you st uh, stealth yourself, you will blind someone for 5 seconds. You can blind up to 5 targets. It's a small radius, but you know, it's, it's a nice utility to use, especially against melee characters like Hammer Warriors or Guardians or other, other thieves that, you know, backstab thieves or whatever. It, it can also be a really good. Infusion of Shadows is a really nice trait. Now you can, instead of uh, going for, you know, the small numbers, you can go even looking uh, further up. You can uh, Hidden Thief, I don't know if you remember, but I was using this one as well. That uh, once you steal, you grant, uh, it, it grants you uh, stealth. It is a really nice thing. I I just prefer not to use it because of, uh, of the combination of the two heals, especially against champions, it will make your life much, much easier. Um, right, whatever, some message on the board, but Borderland, Bloodlust, who cares. Um, right, Power of Inertia, this is what the, we're going to the 20 points in Acrobatics, I'm going for Power of Inertia, you know me, I love my Might Stacks. Already proved it that I can stack up between 20 to 25 Might Stacks, Quite easy with the rotation, with the swapping weapons and whatnot, and I just love it. You know, this is my personal preference. Um, vigorous recovery. Uh, we're, we're gaining vigor for six seconds. This means endurance regeneration by 100%. This is freaking amazing. 
especially for the dodging. You can with with this trait, dodging returns some of endurance used. You can dodge three times with the vigorous uh, vigor thing. Uh, you know, vigorous recovery with a hundred percent endurance regeneration. You can go dodge even more combined with withdraw. You can be freaking unstoppable, basically. You could just keep on dodging all the freaking time. Uh, you know, just to stay alive long enough to finish off your target, so to speak. As always, Meaty is May I Troll You, okay? This is basically a trolling uh, build, a very survivability build, and a very, uh, like, condition-based build. It's not a, you know, I'm immortal to everything, I still go down like anyone else, but I survive longer than I would survive in any other build with this build, for example. Uh, you can also try and go the hard to catch is is a PvP move, but I don't like the cooldown on it. It's 30 seconds. It's not my be biggest uh, favorite thing, so to speak. Uh, da -da -da. What else do we have here? Nothing much really. Pain response also good thing for PvP. This is actually pretty good because it removes three uh, conditions off you and it gives you a regen. This is pointless for me. Uh, in in the sort of way that I already have a region here uh, without cooldowns. I mean, the only cooldowns on it if I already have a region that it won't reapply. So, like 90% of the time, I'll have region on, which is really good. And I have the condition removal every three seconds. So, you know, I just stay in stealth just a little bit longer and I'll get all my conditions removed, you know. So I prefer to go for power of inertia, not inertia, I was corrected a few times already, power of inertia and vigorous recovery. Uh, in trickery, we're going for 20 points, caltrops of course on the dodge, this is, you know, without going for caltrops on the dodge, if you're going for this kind of build, you're just wasting a trade point, in my opinion. But that's my opinion, you know, I don't know anything anyway. Uh, you can go here for Ricochet or Bountiful Thief. It's really, really up to you. Uh, if you could see uh, my my solo champion kill against the champion Risen King, I think it was. Like the big eye, it looks like the eye of Zaitan, whatever. Uh, I used Bountiful Thief on that uh, fight because... Uh, that champion actually, when he puts like a bubble shield on him, if you attack it, it each attack gives him one stack of might. Bountiful Thief is freaking amazing because it's still the, the boon of it. Except for that, you can uh, go for Ricochet, like I said. If you're in a dungeon, for example, Ricochet is really good. Or if you're fighting a champion that has adds, Ricochet is really good because it bounces off him to other uh, mobs that are around, around him that bounces up to three uh, targets like the the mob that you are attacking and two other additional mobs and that basically spread out the conditions and the bleeds and whatnot uh, except for that there's nothing much to the traits those are the traits uh, right now for the MITI condition build we're going to go over the items whatever the armor whoops I need to repair those boots never mind as you can see I'm still using the noble the, the runes of noble, uh, I do believe that I said when you can get them, but I don't rem really remember, it's from an instance, whatever dungeon, uh, just go to the dungeon vendors in LA and check who's sell selling the noble runes. Uh, the main point of it, I gain maximum conditions that any rune can give me, which is 28, 55 and 100. This is the maximum condition that you can get out of it. I increased my my duration by 40%, which is awesome. And every time I use the heal, I gain three stacks of might for 10 seconds, which is not really a 10 seconds, uh, since I get 20, uh, 40 points, uh, 40% from uh, from that, and I get uh, boon duration 20% from here. So basically, it's 60% to my might duration. So it will be 16 seconds instead of 10, okay? And it will apply uh, to any other might stack that I should get, basically. So I use withdraw a lot. So <laughs> every time I use withdraw, I'll gain three free of three free three stacks of might. Now people have been asking me why don't I use undead runes? Because since I am using the dire set, the dire gear, 
I can get uh, much more effects, so to speak, from uh, from the. Wow, I lost my thought there for a second. Uh, from the toughness, basically, because undead will give me 50 extra toughness, and it will give me 5% uh, of my toughness to my condition uh, in total. Now, my toughness, as you can see, it's 100, uh, 1,952. So extra 50 toughness that will put me on 2000 toughness and my original condition is 1554. Now if I'll apply uh, this food, Master Tuning Crystals, which will give me also 6% of my toughness to my condition. In total it's 11%. 11% out of 2000, that's roughly 220 uh, condition damage that I will gain uh, on to, onto my condition damage in total, so it will put me on 1770 roughly, right? So, uh, why don't I actually go for that? It's, it's just there for all eternities, right? Because if I, if I will go for that, it's, it's like I said, it's my personal preference, it's my personal playstyle, you don't have to pick it. If you think that undead runes are better for you, go for undead runes. Or if you think any other runes is better for you, go for that. Me personally, I love my might stacks. I love the buff that I get from the noble runes. Uh, so I just stick with them. You know, I don't want to change my... Uh, I, I have a theory, basically, that I have a sort of rule. Uh, if I have a certainty and a maybe, I'll go with a certainty. Certainty is that noble runes work perfectly, okay? I love the might stacks, I know the rotations, I gain might stacks all the time, so why change it, if you know what I mean. Also, uh, as you can see, it's all dire gear, right? My weapons are also dire, uh, yeah, basically dire. I changed my sigil, if you can see. By the way, I don't equip a dagger here, because when I swap weapons, there you go, dagger, dagger, right, two daggers. When I swap weapons, this dagger counts as it it's in in here so you know I don't need a secondary uh, like a pestle here and a dagger here or whatever so although I do have them you know as backup maybe it will be changed I do have the, the, the pistol and the dagger if I need them right so as you can see I still use the gain three stacks of might every uh, 420 uh, seconds every time I swap weapons I do, swap, do switch weapons a lot like I said I have the rotation uh, for except for that, I am going for sigil, superior sigil of bursting that adds extra six percent to my current condition damage, which is this. I I left the ten percent uh, bleed duration, which is agony, because I have enough duration from my gear. As you can see, I still use the, still have the twenty, what is it, two 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 set right to give me forty five percent bleed duration in total, which is really not bad at all uh, combined with the food 45% combined with this one which is 40% uh, percent condition damage that is 85% condition uh, bleed your duration in total uh, yeah except for that what else did I want to talk about uh, my back piece is a craftable for the people that have been asking me it is a craftable like it does use the item from uh, one of the items from the fractals, you know, the drop items, whatever, the ascend and drop, and all my other gear, like my jewels, my my necklace, my rings, my trinkets, whatever you want to call them, uh, they are dire with 18% uh, 18 precision on all of them, okay? I don't know why I went for that, I guess because they didn't have raw dire stuff. And yes, I do have ascendance gear and I am working on my armor, it is pointless to work for it because the buff in total to my stats is 44%, that's it, 4% in total. Uh, and it's a pain in the arse to get the, the set, but I am still going for it because, hey, 4% is better than no percent. That's my theory. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much I, I it, it will cost me. Also, like I said already, this is the food that I use for 40 condition duration with 70 condition damage and 6% of my toughness is uh, going to my condition as well 4% of my vitality also goes to my condition damage um, yeah that's about it 
that's about uh, the meteor build. Now about the How wonderful to see you. poison ear build. Yeah, whatever. Okay, poison ear build. So we are going for 20 points in deadly arts. We are going for reduce recharge on venom skills, which is number eight trait. And we are going for Mug. Now you can go for either Mug or Venomous Strength. I prefer Mug. It does a little bit of damage, but the main reason why I go for Mug is healing. Because I lack a lot of survivability with my uh, Venomous... Uh, with my Poison Ear build, as I, as I call it. Uh, we're going for 30 points in Shadow Arts. The main reason is Venomous Aura, of obviously, because we want to spread our poisons as much as we can. And except for that, we're going for Leeching Venoms. Okay, Leeching Venoms is good for survivability and, and damage. And we're going for Shadows Embrace. Now, here's the, the thing, right? If you want, you can go for... Shadows Protect, Shadow Protector, and Shadows Embrace, or to combine it with Leeching Venom, this this will give you like a, a better heal situation because you will use Venoms, and this will clear conditions if it's a condition build. Uh, it's if, if it's a condition fight, if you are fighting. Now this build, I sometimes use it in dungeons to share my Venoms to my you know to my party, which is really good. I use this build mainly in SPVP and tournaments, and sometimes I use it in World We Worlds, basically. Except for that, we are going for 30 points, uh, 20 points in Trickery, I'm sorry. We can go for either Ricochet, okay, or we can go for Bount uh, Bountiful Thief, because I'll explain in a second why. And we're going for Caltrops, obviously, because I don't have any points in Acrobatics. Because I prefer to, to gain the extra damages, you know, to increase my initiatives, to gain initiatives every time I steal. Uh, because I don't have this, uh, Fell in Grace, I don't gain the endurance back. Like, I can dodge once, I can dodge twice, and then I'm freaking dry, okay? Now this, if I'll steal... Oh wait, I need to steal it from someone, never mind, did not work. So I'll gain Vigor for uh, 10 seconds, 100% of you know, regeneration of my endurance. By the way, I don't know if you know it or not, but Vigor has been uh, nerfed. It used to be 16 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, and this one uh, this one was 10 seconds or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken, and I might be wrong. But I, it was quite nerfed. So, you know, but it's still good buff. Vigor is really good buff. It's really worth having it. So basically, this is the, the rotation, the build that I go for, if I go for PvP. You know, or PvE. It's really, really nice uh, build to have. Now, utilities. I haven't spoken about my utilities in the meaty build. Utilities are as follow: we draw as my main heal. Okay, I just love we draw. It's a short, you know, it's a short dur uh, cooldown heal. It gives me the heal. It gives me the evade. It clears any uh, slowdown stuff, cripple, chilled, immobilized. You know. You cannot CC me unless I'm stunned, which does not clear that one. Break stun, it does not. But, you know, I can break anything else except for that. It gives me a really nice heal. It gives me the evade, which means I am, uh, you know, so to speak, avo avoiding all the crap. Uh, which is really good. Especially with the trick of the forward withdrawal if you need to close gaps and whatnot. Uh, right. Uh, except for that... I, I use Signet of Agility, as we already know, to clear more conditions if I have to, and to refill my uh, my endurance, like I, like we showed before. There you go. My dodging meter is down. Use this one; it's full up to 100%. It has a 30 seconds cooldown, but it's really worth to to have that one uh, on any fight, basically, in my opinion. If it's a dungeon fights or if it's a champion fight. Uh, unless you know that the champion, you just need to burst him down, then I would suggest to replace it with, uh, you know, something else. Again, this is about the metal build, right? We're not talking about the poison ear build, I just forgot. Uh, I'm just gonna cut it in, I guess, whatever. Uh, so, except for that, 
we're gonna gonna have cold shops all the freaking time uh, on on the meter build and I'm using needle trap it's not pointless it's a really good thing it, it applies poisons it immobilizes your target inside the cold shops if you if you do it right I showed so many times against champions when I trap my my target down inside it gets the bleeding the extra bleeding and it gets the poison down and you know it just Trollololololol it to death basically and I use Thieves Guild on single targets and Dagger Storm if I know that the champion or the dungeon has like group incoming or whatever so Dagger Storm is definitely in play uh, for the Venom for the Poisoner build I use Venom Scale I use Spider Venom and I use Ambush as my utility my elite skill will be Thief Guild because with this, if you play it right, you can have three to four thieves up. You spread the, the the poisons against them. I'm talking about solo play. In a group, it's really freaking amazing. Uh, I played uh, with my friend, a thief as well, that has uh, his elite as thieves guild. So we basically were charging a base, me, him, spawning uh, two thieves each, right? I just shared venoms the bunkiest you know the most tankiest guardian went down in like five seconds flat okay it was dead we're, we're both both conditioned uh, thieves i was poisoner and he, he was he was using my meaty build uh so yeah i used this build skelk venom as well it's really freaking awesome if you are in a party like in a dungeon or in world we world when you have people with you if you are playing it solo it's such a pointless heal in my opinion it does gives you like the heal and it it is combined really well with uh, you know each hit is a heal for 711 and the leeching venoms also gives you a heal uh, because it, it is considered a venom so you know every time you lose you use a venom leeching venom leeching venoms will heal you and do extra damage and it is reduced uh, its cooldown by 20 uh, percent so it's 36 seconds instead of 45. It's 45, is it? Let, let's check really quick. I don't freaking remember even. Yeah, 45. Okay, I was correct. Right, so yeah, this is basically it. Let me just uh, go back to my meter build. I just love that. How wonderful to see you. People have been asking also which build I prefer personally. Personally, I prefer... Uh, let me have that one for speedrunning. Uh, personally, I prefer the meter build. You know, if it's a dungeon, if it's soloing stuff, it's, if it's anything else, if it's worldly world, I guess, as well. I prefer the mythic build, it's just my kind of a build, it's my favorite build, <laughs> if you want to call it that way. Because it's a build that I am really, really familiar with, and I am not planning to change it or anything, you know, to anything. So, you know, if you have something good don't fix something ain't broken right that's how they say it i guess if not then they should so yeah don't fix anything that is not broken this bill is not is definitely not broken and i prove it time and time and time again by uploading those videos of me soloing champions so this is my preferred build in outside in pve and i mean i don't do much world to world but when i do I use that build. If I, if not, then I use the Poisoner build. In in World of World, it does not really roll a play, play a role, roll a play. What? <laughs> play a role, guys? It's almost 5 a.m. here. Okay, I don't know what I'm still doing up. I'm doing this freaking video for you guys. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So in PVE, definitely made a build. In PVP, I'm going in like in tournaments. Uh, uh, TPVP, I'm going for the Poisoner. Because it's quite good on one versus one and one versus two, and it's really supportive to my team. It spreads a lot of conditions, especially if you you're fighting with a condition-based uh, characters, uh, like a necromancer or a mesmer or an engineer, anyone basically, who, or ranger even, anyone who's spreading conditions. Uh, you just roll with them, you spread those conditions. They will do so much damage. Also, another thing that I wanted to talk about, when you scale Venom, for example, and you have the Thieves up, and you share the scale Venom to them, every scale Venom that they will apply 
considered like you applied it because those thieves, right, the ambush thief and the thieves guild thief, they, sh they, you basically share your stats with them. So whatever condition damage you have, they have it as well. So every time they apply like a venom, for example, scale venom, uh, they, it just adds up to the stacks and they do much more damage. Like bleeding, for example, you put two bleeds, you'll do X amount of damage. You'll put five bleeds, you'll do, you know, if you apply four bleeds, then you'll do double damage. And if you do eight bleeds, etc, etc, etc. So scale venom, it just stacking up the st their scale venom to your scale venom. And it means like you apply them. So if you share the scale venom to like three thieves of yours and each of them applies it, you apply three stacks, they apply nine, that it will do the damage as if you applied 12 scale venom stacks, which is freaking awesome. It's really, really good. And like I said before, in PvP, everyone moves all the freaking time almost. So scale venom is a really, really good tool tool to uh, just break them down like in a few seconds really really good so this is it girl, girl blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so this is it guys I uh, hope you enjoyed this video uh, hope this tutorial or whatever build work uh, helped you out if you have any questions anything to say in comments whatever uh, you can either send me mails uh, I have Particularly this guy, uh, Veronican, that has been spending me a lot of uh, mails lately. Uh, two days old, you see, you can see that. I had like gazillion mails before that that I just deleted. I haven't been in Guild Wars for uh, almost two days. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you can send me messages either in-game or just leave it on the, in the comments below of this video. And that's about it. Have a freaking amazing 2014. Have a awesome year let them bleed guys let them bleed with agony screaming from the ground okay i'll go to sleep night